Hey guys, this is Eric for FinalCutStudioSchool.com and I've got a pretty in-depth shake tutorial. I'm going to show you advanced tracking, but not only that, I'm going to show you how to do a so uh, kind of a r generic planar track um, inside of shake. So let me bring shake up and let's get started. I have a comp I've been working on here. It's It's been a bear. Uh, I've got to match and track pictures to every one of these frames and so far you can see what I've done. I've got this much. I've even went in over here and brung in the highlights from the, sh from the uh, sunlight coming through because when I laid this picture in here those highlights were gone. I had to recreate those highlights. Um, as you can see here what I'm talking about is a planar track. Is As you can see here this picture here here and here are all the same picture. It's one big picture that I've spanned the length of these three frames. Instead of putting a single picture here, a single picture here, and a single picture here, it's one big picture. Like if you had a video in this, uh, using it in this, you don't have to be stills. I'm just doing it for resource purposes for the machine. If you put a video in here, my of me, my head would be in this frame, body in this frame, and uh, waist midsection in this frame or knees in this frame, body in this frame, head in this frame. It's one big picture instead of having to do them individually. Same way with this one over here, these two. As you can see this tree spans on up into this picture here. You know, this is the same picture, it's just spanned the length of two frames. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This is a wonderful, wonderful um, footage I've got here from CMI VFX visual effects and uh, it's perfect for learning to track because it's got highlights it's got non highlighted things to track pretty uh, pretty obvious track points and then there's pretty some obscure track points because when you scroll through this stairway here twists and turns around like this and some of these tracks like right here is obscured you know and these doors open up at the end and stuff like this like this one is obscured right here so this is a really really good practice uh, material video here for tracking or basically anything really you want to do so we're gonna use this as you can see it's no joke it's 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 a complicated process but not once you get the hang of it here I have all these tracks and I'm only halfway finished and you can see how big the tree is over here it's fairly good sized tree for just what we've got so far okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from scratch I'm going to get rid of all these, so I'm just going to make a copy of this original footage here and paste it and load it in the viewer. And you can see it's clear, good to go. So which ones, let me move this out of the way so we can start fresh. Which ones do you all want for me to demonstrate how to do a planar track on? Well, I say we do a planar track on these three right here so I can show you how to bring in the highlights. What do you say? So the first thing I'm going to do is select my footage, just frame up my footage here. I'm going to select my moving stairs footage, make sure I'm parked on frame 1. I'm going to start, we'll start with frame 1. I have it on frame 7, but we'll start with frame 1. Okay. Go to Transform tab. Right click, branch, or just insert a match move node. Okay. When you do this, it'll come up blank. That's because your match move is popped into the foreground you need to put pop this into your background the plate that you're tracking with match move is always your background plate okay and we're gonna have to do a four point track of course now these have really good tracking points so I'm not gonna have to go in and fiddle with tolerances and rotation and scale or none of that good stuff um, I've went over that in other tracking videos I'm just wanting to show you basically here how to do a planar track how to span your picture among three or four or whatever many picture frames or whatever you can find a good use for this stuff so let's go over here to our track top and hit four point okay now what this does this will bring up our four point trackers and we want to kind of keep these in the same order so this will be our upper left corner so I'll take this and put it up here in our upper left corner this will be our upper right our lower left now see instead of doing it like this putting all four trackers like this I'm gonna span the whole entire area like this right here. Now I'm treating these three separate picture frames as one area to be tracked. Okay, so let's go in and position our tracking points a little more accurately. I 
Okay, it don't really matter what size resolution your pictures is since uh, Shake is infinite workspace. You can bring in a freaking 6K plate and it'll work with it. Okay, let's bring them out. Now we have our tracking spots in. Let's go ahead and hit our track forward button and see if we uh, hold the track pretty well. If not, we'll have to go back and adjust it. So let's go ahead and hit our track forward button right here. I'm going to keep my hand on the escape in case it messes up and loses track. So I'm going to go ahead and track forward. Now I have a strong machine with a fast hard drive so I didn't put on turn on limit processing but you may want to turn on your limit processing which will just kind of help your processor when track helps it be faster it just limits what it's rendering to the area within the trackers no big deal it looks like we're having a pretty smooth track on our first try there let's look and see what we got and there we go we got some pretty good tracks as you can see there okay well now what do we want to do well the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to bring in an image color and I'm going to make this white I'm going to make the color white okay I'm going to pop this into my match move foreground bring up my match move parameters change it to iMult go down here to output type it's on background change it to iMult okay and then turn it to active and now when we do this if you can see right here we have just our area singled out that we have our track on pretty cool huh so now we've removed this from the scene, we need to cut a hole. Now we're not just laying a picture over top of this and tracking it like most people would do it generically. This is a, uh, a good way to do it. Uh, this is cutting a hole in our movie, uh, sort of, in, in a sense. So now what do we do? Well, we need to uh, add a contrast in Luma so I can bring out these highlights. So I'm going to have to add two or three contrast in Lumas to get these uh, highlights how I want them. So let's go ahead into our color tab and add a contrast in Luma. Now let's fiddle with our value in center and just get our highlights here. As white as we can get them. Okay, if we need to, you can add another contrast in Luma to that and maybe even get it to be a little bit wider than what it is. But I don't think we're going to need it, so let's just... Uh, delete that okay so now we have our highlights extracted I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna name this highlights contrast Luma so now I know that's my highlights okay so now I'm gonna select match move and I'm gonna branch another contrast in Luma okay so now since I've got my highlights um, singled out I want to just single out the whole screen here the whole square so we'll go in and I'll adjust this the best I can here. Don't worry about the what's in the middle there. We're going to take care of that later. Okay, let's add another contrast in Luma to that one. It, this one might help if we do that. Okay. Whoa, went too far. That looks like it's pretty white, but we got this junk in the middle, and we can clean that up. We're gonna we'll clean all that up later. Okay, no worries. Okay, now we have this extracted. What are we gonna want to do now? Well, what we're gonna want to do now is I want to add a blur to my contrast in Luma. So I'm gonna go to filter, blur. I'm gonna give it about a 14 pixel blur, like that. Then I want to go to my color tab and I want to reorder this. I'm going to add a reorder tab and I'm going to change my alpha channel to my luminance because that's what we're basing this on, our luminance. That's what we just done. Okay, now we have that. Now let's append the switch mode, a switch mat to the very end and plug this into our second input. Okay, now what do we need to do? Well, what we need to do is we need to come up here and select our match move. I'm going to copy it by hitting Command C. Then I'm going to paste a clone by hitting control shift V now as you can see that little pink link that 
posted pasted a linked clone. Whatever we do to our first match move, we're going to do to this one. So I'm going to bring this down like this. Refresh my nodes. I'm going to go back to my image tab and bring in another color. This time I'm going to leave it black. Okay? And I'm going to pop it in to the second input of my switch map. Okay? So now we need something to put inside the picture. So let me just paste... Let me copy this little picture here and paste it. We'll just use this picture here, Monet. It's a Monet. Okay? So then I'll bring it down into here, into my first input of my match move. Like that. And I'm going to bring this into my switch mat. Like so. Now I'm going to go back into my match move clone parameters. I'm going to change it from iMult to over. Now, what this has done is, you can see, it's threw in my clip right here. So now what we want to do is, I'm going to add a corner pin to my picture. So let's go to transforms, corner pin. That threw in a corner pin right there. Let's zoom out so you can see it. And there it is. There's my corner pin. I'm going to take this corner pin and make it the size of my original footage here by stretching out the corner like this. So, okay. Now, <clears throat> all we need to do is I'm going to add an overnode over. I'm going to lay that over my original footage. There. Now we have this so-called track, but we need to do a lot of cleaning up. Okay? There's a lot of things we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my reorder node and I'm going to append an outside node. Like that. I'm going to go to my image tab. I'm going to create a roto shape. And I'm going to go in here and make a couple of roto shapes around this, like so. And pop it into my outside node. Now, boom, that takes care of it, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to get this shape to track along with our footage. So I'm going to right click on my shape. My tracker is match move 7. So I'm going to go down to attach tracker shape. I have a bunch listed because I have a bunch of trackers. So you all won't have this many. I'm going to go to match move 7. Track 1. Now that has attached that shape to my match move parameter. And when I scroll through, you can see my shape is attached. No problem. Now we need to make another one. We'll go to Layer. We'll append another outside node. We'll go to Image and make another roto shape. And let's make our roto shape around this one. Like that. We'll pop this one in also. And we'll attach this shape to the same tracker that we attached the last one to. So now let me zoom out here. Now when I scroll through, you'll see my shapes are attached and that junk that was in the middle is gone. Okay? So now I can go to my Overnode. And as you can see right here, we have our pictures, our, our picture tracked those th all three frames. The same picture is stretched over all three frames. So now we want to lay my highlights back over. So this is where this comes in right here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a screen node to this. A little layer. Screen. And I'm going to pop my over into the second input of my screen. And now as you can see we have the highlights. It's a little bit strong for my taste. Let's go to color. Add a fade node and bring it down a tad. It's 
frame it up. Now we have our highlights. We have our picture spanned the area of all three nodes, of all three picture frames, and you can take this same exact technique and apply it to a single frame. You know, so if you want me to go over this again, we can. Remember, I used one picture to span the length of all three picture frames instead of doing it one per frame. Like I said, if you had a picture of a person, it would be head, waist, legs. One video, one picture per all three frames because this is what we call a planar tracker. We put a keyframe, we put our trackers at the corners instead of around each individual frame. So let's go back up to the beginning where we've got our moving stairs. We match moved it and set it to I Mult. Pulled out the contrast lumens to uh, bring out the highlights. Like that. And we blurred it, reordered it, the alpha channel to the luminous channel. Made our outside rotos. Switch matched it with our background and another match move. Laid it over everything. And there you go. Here's my tree. Just kind of don't pay attention to that other tree there. Okay. Now remember, on the, on the original match move, make sure your background is white. I mean, your foreground is white. And on your match move clone, make sure your background is black. And um, pretty much that's it, guys. Hey, guys. I just wanted to show you guys what the finest, final result looked like if I scroll through to prove to you that it is tracked. So let me go through here and scroll. You can see my pictures up there are tracked just fine. Not a problem. It goes through and does a good job. Even the uh, highlights are tracked. So there you go, guys. Hope you all learned something.